Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Let's talk about another psychic training tool. One of the best out there, one of the funnest. Uh, these are difficult to locate uh, based on, of course, old games that were made in the 70s. I'm not sure exactly when this was made. Um, I don't think there's anything on it. It's called Brain Waves. This is the kind of great stuff that was made that people uh, were using their minds and imaginations. So pressing a button to shoot. Uh, let's be a first-person shooter game. Uh, like, real battles like that. And, of course, all the little fat we weasels that are involved in uh, video games in general, uh, playing those kind of things, which uh, uh, have never done anything in their life, uh, period. At least most of them. But, you know, certainly, like everything else, video games have their place. Uh, but, of course... Uh, the video games, at least most of them, aren't geared towards uh, developing your consciousness or anything else other than reacting to a situation in an inappropriate way. You certainly aren't going to use that in life, that you're going to walk around with a machine gun and shoot people, uh, no matter how fun that would be. So brainwaves is another one of those interesting things. I'm not, As I said, I'm not sure what year this was made. This was made in the late 70s, I believe. Uh, it has this cool board here which I don't want to pick up yet. Let me just look at it here because there's batteries underneath here and those tend to fall out easily. Um, but it's a really cool game uh, and you have a little protective thing here. So your uh, uh, opponent or your fellow uh, psychokinesis projection person can't see where you're placing it. Now, the whole idea is you've got to uh, tune your knob here to a particular color. So it's, it's a one in three chance of guessing. And of course, the one thing you want to do with all this kind of stuff is never guess. When you start guessing, you bring it to a low level. Whether you're playing Psychic Battleship or any of the other traditional games, which are all based a lot. Interesting enough, a lot of these things are based on telekinesis and so forth. They do it in a very low level, meaning you're just guessing with Battleship. You go down, you're making grids, you're using a very common way of doing things. Uh, instead of perceiving what's going on with the actual uh, higher level, can you perceive, can you remote view uh, what's going on with your Battleship op uh, op uh, opponent? And it's kind of the same thing here. So each of you is going to set a particular color here, yellow, green, or not. And then you're going to, and each side has the same thing on it. And uh, then you're going to guess uh, what that person, uh, it's going to show what yours is. This is set on red, so this should come up red. Uh, this over here, I haven't set. That knob is broken off. I'm not going to mess with it. Uh, this is basically... Um, uh, strictly for um, demonstration here, but what a fantastic, fun tool this is. These are very similar to what they would do in um, the uh, psychic training at SRI, at Princeton Engineering Institute. These are very similar to what they would do here. So to think that these are toys or little things, and look at the cool graphics here. Look at this. A pyramid with a an eye on it, which has been so demonized, the Illuminati, whoever the hell they are. Because it's supposed to be like this. So, um, when you put it on here, and the other pyramid is showing to your uh, opponent. And here you just set it. And this way, it's, instead of having the little things here, you have the big things here. So, how nice, very well designed, very simple. And it's a whole idea of that you're supposed to project... Uh, what your color is, or you are trying to actually read the mind of the other person. So the other person should set theirs on, let's say, whatever it is, the color that they choose. And of course, each person chooses their own. The person should then project to his opponent or the person he's training with yellow. So what you're doing is you're thinking yellow, and that's all you have to do. People think that there's something special to all this. There really isn't. So you're just thinking special. You're just thinking yellow. And they're thinking whatever it is. And then what you're supposed to do is not guess. What do you sense? What is that person sending you? And, of course, that's the way it works. Pretty, pretty simple. And, of course, these go like this in the front. As you said, these are difficult to find generally. 
They can run anywhere from 50 to uh, to over 100. As I said, these are very rare. This kind of stuff is, um, since it's so old now, you're talking 40, 50 years old, um, you can find these in fairly good condition. The one thing about board games and so many things is that uh, they're played uh, once or twice and then put back in the box, and if they're kept up, they're still stuck in a closet somewhere and they don't really deteriorate very much. I mean, this is in great condition um, considering how old it is. It's not faded or anything else. I did have the original box with this as well. And um, let's take this off. Uh, so, I mean, you can get these things in really good condition, if that even really matters. I mean, anything like this is fun and interesting, and this is a great trainer. Now, if you use the stupid stuff that's in books uh, that tells you how to develop psychic powers and all these other things, psychic abilities, and how to do things, you know, all these very boring things you do don't work, people. And while psychic abilities uh, everyone can work with, it is not something that everybody can do. Don't be... Uh, uh, fooled by that statement. Well, everybody can uh, can be a bodybuilder. Anybody can play golf well. Well, you know, this is true. With years of practice, years of study, years of coaching, and to downgrade uh, psychic abilities, uh, that it's something, well, we can all do it. Just fall out of bed and you just send your energies. Oh, yeah, I know what's going on everywhere. What is that nonsense? This is what you hear from a lot of bogus teachers. When teachers talk like that, you should run for the road because they don't know what they're talking about. They're just conning you saying that, well, you can learn it too. Just pay me money. But you're not talking about being a little psychic. When you're talking about psychic energies, you're talking about being able to do something seriously or getting messages or being telepathic or getting uh, understanding what's going on. You're not talking about general level stuff. And this is why people say that. So psychic abilities are attainable uh, by everyone to a very low degree. And to those that practice, like bodybuilding, like playing golf, like doing most things, uh, you can practice and become good at it. But it is work, plain and simple. Some people are better at it than others. Some people can play golf and train and go to the best schools and become professionals. A very small number of people can do that. Most people can probably play golf well. Another percentage can probably be excellent players. And, they, you know, every time you go up the scale, you're cutting down the percentage of people that can do it. And this is dependent on many factors. Desire, money, time, training. Who's going to send you to golf schools? You're going to pay that money? You're going to get the best clubs? You're going to play the best courses? You know, most people play it as the idiot game that it is. Followed the white ball and you hit it and so forth. So the whole idea is that... Um, um, Playing it well, maybe people do, maybe they don't. But who knows what's going on? Very few people are experts and even fewer are professionals. And the same thing goes with psychic empowerment. If you think you're going to uh, uh, get all these little goofy books that don't have any physical training tools and excel at them, you're a special kind of stout bat. Plain and simple. So... This is a skill that requires professional training, professional coaching, and professional materials to work with. Of course, I provide all those, and you go to Dr. Thor's courses, and I'll take you through the whole thing. But, you know, if you want that, you have to do it. If you don't want to do it, well, don't think that this is something that you bump your head on on the uh, on your door sometime. Oh, i got psychic abilities, and I hit my head. No, now you're retarded. That's a big difference. So we got to understand all that. And it's just not true. Very few people are psychically talented. Uh, people can learn to use tools, pendulums, runes, tarot cards to different degrees of uh, proficiency. And like anything else, if you dive into it and spend the time practicing, um, you will develop a certain level of a skill. But don't think you're going to become masters are born. They're not made. But they uh, there is still a... Uh, a percentage of your work that has to be just hardcore work. So you have to put the time in, you have to do it, and you may be have some natural abilities. And this is uh, what allows you to become a master, but it doesn't allow you much more than that in terms of, well, I'm a guy, I've got 20%, so I don't have to do any of the work. Nada. Okay, so let's do this. So you pick one of the colors, you project it over to you, and this is pretty much the game in general. Then once you both have said that and you're settled on it, you say, well, okay, I, I am reading what you're getting. And again, if you're guessing, 
That's not the point of this game. If you do that, you're only cheating yourself. The whole idea is you should be trying to sense the energy. Now, different colors have different energies to them. So yellow's going to have a, a, a certain vibration to it. Green's going to have another, and red's going to have another. So that's another way, and there's all sorts of different techniques of doing this stuff and how you can actually use these type of tools. Uh, we have lots of training videos in the uh, All Access membership, as well, of course, as the courses that take you step by step through everything, including our Psychic Gym book and so forth. Very simple stuff, but very effective. So once you've decided that, you press this, okay? Now, this tells you what the other person is set on and what you are set on. See, this is my side, and it says red. What is this over here, Mr. Bill? It's red. Ooh. So the whole idea is that when you set that, there's, there's no cheating or anything else. So what you do there is then you keep repeating it. And, you know, with all psychic training, you, sh you shouldn't do things for long periods of time. Five, ten minutes, uh, then stop. You can come back to it. But you're burnt out after that, and your psychic abilities start to get into guessing what you want to ignore. Any guessing is, what's the point of it? Uh, so you do it for a while, then you come back because your your energy, your psychic energies are core energies and they burn out very quickly. So again, I could say that, let's say I set this on green just to show you that this should light up. Ooh, miracle. And of course, if you had yellow, that would show up. So it's just as simple as that. And um, that's all there is to the game, but it has a very, very cool look at that. Brainwave. Doo, doo, doo. Look at that cool graphics on there. It has this kind of a grid, but there is no uh, markers that I'm familiar with. I don't remember. That's pretty much what I showed you. So you're not moving around the board that I'm familiar with if you get uh, any um, things right or something. But again, it's Brainwaves. Brainwaves is the name of it. Um, so when you look this up, you go into board games, you put in brainwaves, and this is something you're going to have to check for frequently. I used to try and buy these type of things and keep them. That's really not very practical and difficult to find. And, uh, like you will look now on the different places on the net for it. Uh, that's what other people did. And of course, you're going to find something cheaper and not buy it from someone who wants to, who needs the money to do the research. Uh, but that's the cool game. And as I said, so the, your opponent doesn't know what you're doing. You have this little uh, thing that goes in front of it. And you can see how, as I mentioned, it shows the colors. And of course, this is what your opponent sees. And you both have the same thing there. And that's it. Uh, very simple. This could be easily made with electronics today. Uh, in any way someone wanted to do that. Um, so this could be made, and this is very similar. And, you know, what's interesting is most of these uh, games were based on actual tools that were used by SRI and uh, by Princeton Engineering and so many other um, research, uh, psychic research institutes that were particularly popular through the late 60s into the 70s and into the early 80s. There was an awful lot of this going on, and this is the kind of stuff that works. If you want to build abilities, this kind of colors, this kind of lighting, this kind of back and forth is a great way to learn. And, you know, I've seen people who use something like this for um, five or six times seriously, and they have been able to constantly understand what is being sent to them. So you, you can build these things very quickly if you're a serious person and using the right tools. Now, if you try to do all this stuff on your own and you don't use fun stuff like this, your consciousness turns it off. Oh, that's boring. Bye. So you, you don't understand that aspect of uh, learning as well, particularly higher consciousness learning. It was doesn't deal with anything stupid or boring. That is left to the mind. And why would something of great abilities or something that has great energetic natures to it want to deal with imbecilic practices? That's what the mind is for. Your mind is an imbecile machine. It helps you get through daily life, do your uh, rotten little job, drive your car, pick up your food, cook a hot dog, whatever it may that you do, it doesn't want to be bothered with that. You go to your higher consciousness and, and tell it that you want to cook a hot dog, it's gone, baby. The door's closed and they're not letting anybody in. 
So that has to be very, very well understood. This was um, defined by when they were doing massive psychic studies uh, using uh, cards, the famous uh, symbols, the four symbols out there. Uh, that they were using, quote, ESP cards, as probably people understand them, Zener cards, whatever you want to call them, um, uh, which Ryan started doing thousands of tests like that, and this has been done as an idiot stuff uh, continually, probably still into today. But your consciousness hates that. You know, after two or three minutes of that, your consciousness doesn't care. It's boring. It's stupid. Let's move on to something of importance. Uh, so it actually, now Ryan, after doing these studies, found out that he found some very talented people that got everything right consistently. But after hours and hours of this, and they showed up the next day, they couldn't even spell their name. It bored them so much that they had no response to it whatsoever. That's what happens when you get a lot of bad researchers in this field, so-called parapsychologists, who have no training, have no idea what they're doing, and really are people of low mentalities, which is the entire industry of parapsychology, if there is any of that. Even though they're, from what I believe, uh, they're still having some parapsychology courses and other things. But again, this is hidden from the public to a large degree. You hear nothing about it. At the Ryan Institute in, um, who the heck is that? But um North Carolina or something, Duke University. Uh, so the whole idea is that that kind of thing that goes on is, um, is, has to be recognized. And when you do things from bogus, lying uh, scientists, scientists, whose basic goal is already predetermined that this is garbage and I'm here to disprove it, uh, like the uh, deviant freak uh, James Randi did in his group of... Uh, really scumbucket liars uh, who wanted to think, claim they were scientific, yet they didn't have anybody test anybody else. They tested people and they had the check in their hand of giving it to you. That's not science, people. You have to have a third party with agreed upon tests and you, the third party, holds the money, not the person who's going to. So nobody ever passed anything because it was all rigged from day one. So all of this stuff is the way it goes. And of course, that person was very evil, uh, was a convicted uh, of crimes and many other problems with him and his cohorts, which are basically uh, dumb bunkers, convicted felons, convicted criminals, high school Latin teachers, and people that didn't even graduate high school, Penn Gillette, um, who are basically have very questionable morals and attitudes in general. So... Um, all of this stuff comes together to have a very poor level of these people who claim to be dumb bunkers. You know, it's very difficult to find any real scientist that will go into this field and uh, debunk it in any way whatsoever. It's fascinating. It's interesting. It's been proven for 150 years. And no real scientist will go into it. What you really find, and you found that in James Randi's um, uh, particular board members is very interesting. They're all, as far as I'm concerned personally, all very questionable people. People who made money on the internet from what? You know, self made stooges that deliberately they make money for so they can go out and cause trouble. Military. Yeah, we know how great and corrupt they are. Now, instead of then researching, Psychic powers, buddy boys. Why don't you figure out how to win a war, which the American military never has by themselves? Well, no, the Allies have won wars. The American military has never won a single war. So, and ran like little scared rabbits out of Afghanistan in modern times. So the whole idea is that we have all these problems here that... Um, uh, we have to understand the kind of people that are involved in these organizations. They are not in any way scientists qualified to do anything else. And I don't know why a professional magician, I believe Banachek, the Bojo man, has taken over um, Randy's organization, if there is anything even left from that dung hole. Uh, and he has all these bizarre idiots on his board uh, that have no credibility whatsoever. So, and uh, so I'm not sure what a person who didn't even graduate high school, Penn Gillette, or what a Latin high school teacher, well, that's one step above a gym teacher. Who the hell would do that? What kind of a bozo is that guy? Um, these are qualified people to make any statements on what is considered high level consciousness practices? Really? 
Yeah, well, that's why my plumber is doing some heart surgery on me next week, because he's highly um, qualified to do that. Yeah, pipe's a pipe, whether it's in your heart or in your house. <laughs> yeah, as simple as that. So, uh, well, I'll save a lot of money when our plumbers do our heart surgery on us. So, everyone, I hope you enjoyed that. Here's one of the many tools. We have other ones checked through the channel here, and you can see how lots of these are used. We're doing some updates here from some very old things I've done years ago with bad photography, but here's uh, some updates, and what a great tool this is. As I said, all you've got to do uh, as you turn these things, as you can see, uh, how they light up, and wow, how cool is that? So simple yet so cool just so easy a couple of batteries in there some um telekinesis energies and uh, what a fun fun game this is uh if you're lucky you can find one of these you're probably not gonna these are fairly rare uh and it's very difficult uh to actually um find one of these and as you said it's up to you. Sometimes you can find these things on eBay type places for very inexpensive. You got to watch for them all the time. And then when they pop up, grab them. Hope you'd enjoyed more to come.